Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. In lockdown Victoria, uh, the current stage for lockdown is scheduled to end at 11.59pm on Saturday, oh, sorry, Sunday uh, 13th of September. Melburnians have now been in lockdown for nine weeks. Uh, for suburbs in Melbourne north northwest, it's been 10 weeks, so during the state's second wave. This makes the Melbourne lockdown longer than uh, the city of Wuhan in China, where the virus was originally born. Uh, you would have seen last week, uh, life is back to basic uh, complete normalcy in Wuhan with footage of uh, that giant pool party occurring uh, in Wuhan with no masks or social distancing being practiced. The current lockdown is not guaranteed to end as scheduled on uh, September the 13th. Uh, Dan Andrews at 2 a.m. last night was able to obtain the state of state of emergency power extension uh, he was seeking uh, through the Victorian uh, Upper House, the Legislative Council. Uh, uh, three uh, crossbenchers granted him a one-off six-month uh, COVID extension under the Public Health and Wellbeing Act 2008. Uh, those critical three votes were uh, Greens MLC Samantha Ratnam, uh, Reason Party leader Fiona Patton, and Andy Medic uh, MLC from the Animal Justice Party. Daniel Andrews has claimed that extending his state of emergency uh, powers is the only way to implement COVID safe rules during the reopening process, but this power also allows Dan and his chief health officer, Dr. Brett Sutton, to plunge the state back into a new lockdown at any moment, even if there are no new COVID cases being discovered. In Victoria, new daily COVID cases are now consistently in double digits with 90 today. The daily deaths are now in uh, single digits with almost all of them linked to known aged care outbreaks, uh, which are finally uh, being under control. Uh, current active uh, cases are down to uh, 2,400. Uh, hospital admissions are just over 400 and also uh, ICU uh, patients are around about 20 now. Many local government areas in regional Victoria are now COVID free. With these consistent downward COVID trends, Daniel Andrews has been under repeated pressure at his daily press conference uh, to outline a roadmap out of lockdown and to give Victorians hope and business certainty. Andrews has said he will announce a roadmap to reopening on Sunday the 6th of September, which would have been Father's Day in Victoria, which has now been cancelled with the lockdown making it illegal to visit your father if you don't live with them. Uh, this follows Mother's Day being cancelled in Victoria with the first lockdown uh, still in place on uh, May the 10th, uh, which was Mother's Day this year. Dan's roadmap announcement just happens to be the day after a planned anti-lockdown protest on Saturday. Uh, Avi Yemeni, most of the audience would know who he is, he released a, a video on his TR.news uh, 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 website on Monday, uh, believing that the planned Saturday Freedom March at the Shrine of Remembrance was a trap, so Daniel Andrews could claim on the Sunday that the state's roadmap to reopening will have to be slower because of selfish protesters the day before, and will be able to deflect attention from his own government's uh, culpability in the, the state's second wave, uh, given uh, that uh, the uh, genealogy of this second wave can all be traced back to hotel quarantine breaches <coughs> and their failure uh, to get on top of contact tracing and allowing the virus uh, to get into uh, the healthcare system and uh, more tragically, the, the aged care system. Victoria Police this past week have crushed local lockdown rebellions in Dandenong and Broad, Broad Meadows, uh, which were uh, led by those local areas, uh, Muslim communities. Uh, they've uh, arrested organizers and promoters of the planned Saturday rallies, charging them with incitement, including a, a very disturbing arrest today of a, a, a pregnant 
Ballarat uh, woman in front of her, her two children. Uh, many of them have had gag orders placed on them, not allowing them to speak on social media until after the weekend. Even Sam Newman today got a visit from the police after their alarm at his tweet where he dreamed of a quarter of a million uh, a Melburnians taking place in an anti-lockdown demonstration. You can be guaranteed this Saturday roadblocks will be all around the Shrine of Remembrance. Victoria Police's Public Order Response Unit will be out in force and they will check the idea of anyone out in the about in that area. They will find anyone who is not there for a lawful purpose, even those who were not out to attend the planned protest but were deemed out for a non-essential reason. In response to these police crackdowns on anti-lockdown activism, a lot are asking the question, why didn't this happen to the Black Lives Matter protest organisers and promoters back in early June, since under the restrictions on gatherings <laughs> at that time, uh, that was an illegal protest and no social distancing uh, was practiced. Part of the reason the Andrews government and Victoria Police feel emboldened to take such measures against anti-lockdown activists is because of the Roy Morgan polling last week, which uh, said that a majority of Victorians supported all of the, the stage four lockdown measures, plus the mainstream media's long campaign against what they call virus deniers, anti-maskers, conspiracy theorists, sovereign citizens, and as Assistant uh, Commissioner uh, Luke Cornelius uh, called, uh, uh, called them last week, the batshit crazy tinfoil hat, hat brigade, and of course there's the, uh, the, the term COVIDiots as well. One of the first police and media targets for her anti-lockdown uh, stand was Eve Black, whose video of her passing a Melbourne Metro checkpoint uh, on July 23rd without stating a, a reason to went viral online and set, up, set off a barrage of social media rage and hate against her. Victoria Police uh, tracked her down in Carlton on July 29th and smashed her car window when she refused to answer questions. On July 31st, the Herald Sun ran a sensationalist expose on her career in the adult entertainment industry. Given the target on her at the time, Eve has laid low for the past month. On August 31st, Eve did a 20-minute uh, Facebook Live responding to the media and police targeting of her. Mainstream media reported on this video but did not reach out to Eve for comment. Well, I decided to uh, reach out to Eve for further comment on her video and she's agreed to be my guest on Wilms Front tonight to talk about her experience. Eve, thank you for joining me tonight. Good day, Tim. Thank you for having me tonight. Uh, now, these police checkpoints around the, the Melbourne metro area, uh, they were a new feature uh, uh, of this second lockdown, given that the, the first uh, lockdown, lockdown uh, was only citywide in Melbourne on July the 9th. Uh, so mm. regional Victoria was still in stage two restrictions, uh, which means that uh, all of their their, uh, their pubs, clubs, bars, restaurants were were open. I noticed that uh, James Bartolo, who runs the uh, Conscious Truth Network, he uh, was the first to film and upload his passing at a police checkpoint in Sunbury. That was on uh, July 13th. Is he where mm -hmm. you got your inspiration from? Uh, definitely not. I, um, I've been into uh, investigating uh, the law that we think is actually in place versus um, what common law is. I've been interested in that for quite a few years, but I've not really had a community to connect with about it so that I can learn more from somebody who actually knows about it, somebody who I feel like I can trust to, to learn from. And then within a very short space of time, I did become connected with the wider community of people who are also into um, exploring common law, etc., uh, in Melbourne and just uh, across Victoria. And uh, in a really short space of time, I just ended up getting my hands on some really um, just big information, really, that just made me be like, wow, okay, well, we don't really need to um, tolerate this. Like, not only do I believe that the numbers um, aren't accurate and that there are lies behind it, um, what they're actually doing is unlawful. Um, and I know that people are, led to, people are led to believe that, um, you know, it is lawful because they create acts and everything, acts and legislation, but it's actually not lawful that they've done that. We think that it is, but it's not. 
but um it just it just sort of it sort of snowballed in the in a very short space and i will say that watching james bartolo's video um definitely gave me like a oh okay like i'm seeing this done you know i'm actually seeing an example of it being done so that gave me a lot more confidence that you know if and when i had the situation when i'd need to do that that yes it is possible but uh it wasn't necessarily uh, a video that inspired me to go out there and make it happen for myself definitely not uh, so let's talk about when you passed that uh, Melbourne Metro checkpoint at uh, Bunyol on July 23rd. Melbourne was under still under stage three at that time. It was also the first day of the, the mask mandate for, for Greater Melbourne, which we are still living under. Mm-hmm. And uh, Regional yeah. Victoria at that time was still under stage two. A, my first question is, because as, as you said, it was not something that you planned to set out to do. Why did you want to no. pass uh, that checkpoint? And uh, why, why did you decide to uh, 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 do uh, that common law uh, assertion of your rights in that way as your approach? Mm, okay. Um- I I don't want to comment on exactly what I was doing going into regional Victoria. Um, I'm not going to cover that. It's nothing suspicious like the newspapers might have you um, believe or the websites where they published an article that people might have mistaken about me where it's like two people were busters trying to be like drug mules on the way through a checkpoint. Um, That wasn't accurate. That wasn't me. But I, um, yeah, I'd rather not disclose what I was doing where I was going. Um... But yeah, as, as for um, using the material, I was like, well, okay, I have something that I want to go and do today, which is in this town, which is outside of regional Victoria. I had a, um, an acquaintance in the car with me and he was uh, the one that filmed that, happen, uh, so wasn't he? Correct. He was filming it on my iPad for me. Um, and yeah, so I had the acquaintance in the car with me. We knew that it would happen. This acquaintance is also a part of the same community. So, you know, talking about it in the lead up to it and everything was really, really nerve wracking. But, uh, you know, I had the confidence uh, to, to get through, obviously. I mean, it, it, it worked. Uh, I think that, like, I could have probably done it a little bit more confidently, but uh, it's something that I know intrinsically is is right, and the place that I was coming from was the right place. But it would have been better if I knew the material a little bit more than rather rather than stumbling over some pieces of paper. But um, yeah, because that's, that's when yeah. <laughs> uh, because it was clear from that video you were reading from a script, and that's when the media started talking about this uh, script that uh, uh, was w- was circulated, how to uh, talk your way through. Uh, a checkpoint and and that's when the the reporting started that this was part of a a, a uh, anti-coronavirus cult but the the reason why i mentioned uh james bartolo's uh, initial video and that was 10 days before your video uh he uploaded it to his uh channel he's built up quite a, a a following with his conscious uh truth network there was no mainstream media social media outrage at the time over his uh uh his video but with yours there was it went when i when i say it went viral it was circulated by people who hated what you did and uh, that uh, became a a vicious uh uh social media uh hate uh hate and 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 spite uh towards you with actually well uh you're, you're the person who was uh, directed it directed it to towards and uh, you've commented that you got death threats when i thought the point of this coronavirus lockdown was that people don't die yeah don't forget rape threats as well um yeah when i uh when i uploaded that i certainly never intended it for it to get big. I I wanted to film it for my own, obviously, for my safety, because you don't know how interactions can go with the police. Um, But it obviously went incredibly smoothly because it was like a probably a 60 second, 30 second interaction, essentially, with me and the police officer. Um, So, yeah, I definitely never intended it to be like that. I, I, I would have liked for it to go among 
uh, amongst my community, my friends, and maybe the slightly greater community in the other people who are interested. Yeah, which in is how James's video. That's that. That's how yes. far it circulated. Yeah, I mean, well, I actually did go and have a look at the comments on James's, and it, and it appeared that he also copped quite the tirade of um, you know online online bullying and that kind of thing. But uh, I, it's not a competition who gets bullied the worst. But I do think that I copped it more simply because I was. Um, it, my video was like, it was short and sweet. So it was like a two minute video, 30 seconds of that was the actual interaction with the police. And I think because it was so simple and so succinct and it just goes against everything that people have been being led to believe. It's like, well, hang on, this chick had a 30 second interaction with the cops. She's gone through a checkpoint. What the fuck is this shit about? Like, you know, it, it sort of, it, it mocks essentially the very restrictions that they're trying to put in place and i understand that um so i think that that's that's why it's a 30 second video that just it, it is like so easy for it to to go everywhere because you don't have to sit there and watch for 20 minutes to get upset about it it's um it's very uh infuriating for some people apparently i'll offer a alternative uh, interpretation about why yours uh, went viral where james uh, didn't. I've interviewed James uh, on uh, my Wilms Front show before. He is a, a very, a very confident, very uh, smooth talker. And so when he was a, a crossing that checkpoint, he obviously he was very composed. And a, a, and obviously with with you, uh, you confessed it yourself. You were nervous, and yeah, that that is. Uh, I think the the reason why you were more of a target, and especially since you were so happy once you crossed the the, the checkpoint, you showed way more vulnerability uh, than than James did. And I do also think that there's a misogyny, misogynistic factor to uh, the the fact that you got more abuse because you're uh, an attractive uh, young girl. And so they also, well, the females are called the uh, the gentler sex, and so they're they're much easier to intimidate, to especially online. And I've followed mm. the the I Stand with Dan uh, crew on Twitter, and they are much more vicious with the uh, the female uh, critics of Dan. Uh, they seem to only go after the female journalists in his uh, daily press uh, press pack, uh, Rachel Blacksendale from the Australian. Uh, Alex White from the Herald Sun, Sophie Elthworth from news.com.au, and Gabriella Power uh, from mm. uh, Sky News. Did you? Is that something that you sensed uh, as well? As you said, you got uh, rape threats, which is obviously it's gendered. Yeah. Um, well, look, I, I don't, I don't like to um, sit and play the victim and think that just because I'm a woman that I have it so. I said that, I'll not you. you. <laughs> Yeah, no, and that's and that's fine because I do agree with it somewhat, but I definitely want to clarify. I don't think that just because I'm a female that I deserve to get it any easier, and I don't believe that I've necessarily, um, you know, I I don't I'm not a feminist. I'll put it that way, but um, I know that it's just you you can see it's very clear that you know a woman who is outspoken or I wasn't so confident in that moment but I'm generally quite a confident assertive person um or just a woman that's having a voice about something people will like try to tear that down and yes like you said uh, being a beautiful woman like I mean I think that I'm I'm contra I'm attractive in a conventional sense so that might have given people like a further sense of entitlement to be like yes, oh well that's you know what as I was an attractive at. woman you don't get to have a voice like you sh you're just there to be looked at and then especially when it got leaked about my former um career exploits like people were like oh you see she's just a dumb blah 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 she doesn't she doesn't get to have an opinion just because like you just show your body look hot you don't, you don't get to have that. Nobody actually said those things to me, but it's the tone. And I've been, you know, I, I've, I've spent enough time meeting loads of different people throughout my only 28 years, but I have met a lot of people and I have had a lot of um, experiences in, in my short time um, to the point where I, I, can, I can sense the tone. And I know that that was absolutely the intention. The reason why I mentioned uh, your youth 
as well, because obviously this uh, coronavirus, it's, it's more deadly to the old and the vulnerable. And I said in my introduction, basically most of the deaths now are, are linked to aged care uh, outbreaks, which uh, it has been absolutely uh, tragic. But uh, the, the, the point that I'm making is that uh, they, they wanted to uh, have you as the, the face of the, as the selfish young person, because if you get it, uh, you're only going to have mild symptoms or at the worst, just uh, feel like complete crap for, 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 for two weeks. Uh, but you could be uh, putting uh, older uh, uh, people uh, at risk. And sure. so it was, and so it's that, uh, yeah, that, uh, animosity at young people that are, oh, you only care about uh, yourself, not the, 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 the wider people, uh, typical mm -hmm. young, uh, selfish behavior. So that's the other aspect there. I, um, I certainly agree. And you know what, this is what I've been saying for, for all the people out there who are putting the hate on me, um, and they think that it's selfish. If I truly could see that this virus is actually the threat that it's being played up to be. I would absolutely agree in saying that it's selfish behavior, but I don't see it that way. In fact, I see clearly, and that's why. And we, sh uh, we should also point out, or I should point out, that uh, older people who get it uh, in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, yes, they are more uh, vulnerable to this illness and uh, a lot in that age bracket have uh, died from the virus. But if they get it, it's not a death sentence. There's been a, a been stories about, well, there's a hundred year old, hundred year old Chinese woman and a hundred year old yeah. uh, Spanish woman who survived. I think the Spanish woman, she actually survived the Spanish flu as well. So she's beaten two uh, pa pandemics as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess if a hundred year old um, can beat it, then I think that's probably saying a lot more about lifestyle and um, what we choose to buy into uh, than the severity of this virus. Because, I mean, aside from aside from the fact that she very well might have been a healthy woman and maybe there's not enough emphasis on uh, how to maintain your immune system to prevent yourself from contracting it and having a really serious case of it. Um, like inflated numbers, death certificates being um, manipulated with the cause of death. So look, I'll put it this way. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. Now, after your video went viral, uh, it uh, made its way to uh, the, the daily press pack at uh, Dan Andrews uh, press conference. And uh, he, he said that you were being uh, uh, tracked down. He didn't know uh, whether you you had uh, uh, broken the the coronavirus uh, restrictions, but uh, he said that uh, v Victoria Police were, were looking for you. Uh, Lisa Neville, uh, the police minister, also had a, a a crack at you. Well, the 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 broader a uh, cohort of people who have been using that script uh, that that you were reading called called it a, a selfish, uh, childish stunt uh, wasting uh, police police officers uh, time so the there was uh, well it wasn't just uh, the uh, the government and the the, the police uh, who just wanted to uh, to track you down uh, on their own they were being egged on by the, the media and and social media and uh, they eventually uh, found you on July 29th, which was a, a Wednesday, you were pulled over in Carlton. Obviously, you're not going to, to, to say why you were there, but just talk about uh, what, what, what happened. Uh, so it, uh, I gather from your video uh, that you, or your recent Facebook video where you explained it, that it wasn't actually a checkpoint. You were pulled over by the police. That's correct. And before I do get into that, I just want to say it's it's amazing like how what people will believe and what the media have published because people were saying that I crossed into like a South Australian checkpoint and then the media were saying that Eve Black has been handed a summons to court and fines up to $10,000. I'm like, oh, well, that's nice, dear, because uh, I didn't get a summons to court and I only just received a $1,650 fine. So, um, yeah, just... Word for the wise, definitely don't believe what the media says. Um, 
yeah, as for that day in Carlton, um, correct. I strongly believe that I was being targeted on that day. I believe that my phone had been tapped and that they'd been using my location. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so I'd left uh, where I've been staying and it was probably within three minutes. And being that it was my first journey in my car since, uh, since everything had happened, and I was very like cautious and kind of looking in all of my mirrors and everything, uh, if there were any cops around, because I was fully prepared for that to happen. I had a gut feeling that something was gonna happen. And I had this idea that the next time that I was near any cop cars, that they'd be pulling me over. Like they might have, um, um my my number plate like a, you know how they have like flags a, flagged mm. flag that's right sorry i had a mental blank there um but yeah so i was i was kind of expecting it and then i was looking out and then all of a sudden i i obviously didn't um look hard enough and i hear the sirens wailing and and the um and the lights flashing and then yeah so i pulled over i was like well this is not by a chance is it there's um it's a busy road and i'm on alexandra parade i'm being i'm being targeted so I just, you know, I pulled over and I and I put my window down just a, just a tiny bit, um, just to be able to talk. And they said, um, you know, you got your license. I was like, I don't, I don't need to give you that. Um, I learnt further when you're operating a motor vehicle, you do actually need to provide identification in the form of your name and your address. Um, so I learnt that, and. Um, yeah, so I wasn't complying in that I wasn't giving it to them. But what was failed to be mentioned is the fact that I was actually asking questions as well and they were refusing to answer. So it was very much a sense of like, we have one thing that we want to get from you and we don't really care what you say. We're going to go after that one thing. We know that you're not as confident as other people in this stuff. You're not going to be able to say the right thing when it comes to crunch time because I'm learning it. And it's up here, but when it comes to crunch time, yeah, heck yeah, I totally get nervous, you know? So they said, we're going to smash your window. And I was like, no, like, I just want you to answer my questions. Like, I I actually, in, in the video, I do remember, I, I did film that, but I haven't posted that online. Um, I didn't actually refuse. I just asked them questions. I didn't answer their refuse questions. I just to, asked my own questions. Refuse to yeah. provide my information. So they, yeah. they, they simply asked uh, for your uh, license at first. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that's... I haven't got like... Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, so, so, so uh, that was all what, the, what led to the, the, the smashing, just the, uh, your refusal to, to hand over your license. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were asking me questions and I just didn't think that I needed to answer. They wanted my license and I was like, well, what am I being arrested for? Uh, sorry, what am I being pulled over for? For operating a motor vehicle. I was like, yeah, but am I suspected of committing a crime? And they were like, they, they were just not being straight with me and they weren't answering my questions. So yes, I, I should have given my information. If not a driver's license, then at least your name and address. So I definitely screwed up there. Have you been um, pulled over so pre-COVID? Pre uh, just because uh, Highway Patrol... Uh, in pre-COVID times, it's common for them to just pull vehicles over even if they haven't uh, done anything wrong to do a license and, and registration check. I mean, that's that, that's happened mm. to, to me uh, a, a few years back and they just, what is it, wave your, your license thing and do a check and then give it back to you and say, I oh, have a have a good day. Uh, so that, that sort of stuff hasn't happened to you until now? Uh, well, actually, it, it, it happened um, in in the two, in however many weeks there was where Melbourne was back to stage two when restaurants and stuff were open at limited capacity. Um, I was pulled over on, on a late night back from Frankston, and I've had it maybe a couple of times before that, but um, they've just um, they've just accepted my license and then moved on. So yeah, that's it. But obviously, given the circumstances on that day. Um, and everything that had just been leading up to it, of course, I was hesitant to have any sort of interaction with the cops at all. And I just didn't want to um, give out my information. But they had a target over my head. But in that situation, your refusal to answer that first question probably would have raised that wall and made them want to escalate things with you because you're already showing, like, 
they they might not have a, had your car flagged or, or or something like that. We don't we 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 don't know. But your refusal to answer that first question that certainly it, 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 it's it, it, it's it, it was a it, it was a first move which made the the police suspicious. Um, I I get that, but I don't think that it was coincidence that I was pulled over, Tim. I really don't. I think it'd be naive to think that. Yes, uh, it's, I'm making the point that we or oh, we we don't know, and I'm just exploring the uh, the possibilities because, as you said, uh, you. Uh, learned, learned from that and you yourself admitted that you didn't handle uh, that encounter well. Mm, yeah, no, certainly. I do think that regardless, they would have wanted to at least be a, been able to get away with something on that day because, like, we need an opportunity to make a mockery out of Eve Black. We need The police need to show Eve Black who's boss. Um, so wh whether or not it was my window being smashed and being arrested or them just issuing me a fine, like there would have been something to eventuate out of it, which would have been blown up out of proportion regardless. It's just that, yeah, I made a silly move and then it made, it gave them the ammunition to make the whole story more aggressive, more sensational. And how did they smash uh, your window? Because that's what really shocked me. A, 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 because I've never heard of it happening uh, before, but uh, how did they do it in a safe way where nobody could get glass in their eyes or something like that? Mm, well, that's another thing that makes me think that they had planned to, to smash my window. Uh, maybe they keep this on their person, I don't know. But uh, there was two officers and he asked his, the one that was speaking to me, asked the other guy to pass him the utensil that they have, which is specifically for smashing a window. So it obviously sends some sort of like an electronic jolt through and then it shatters the whole glass. So it all just crumbled in front of, not crumbled, like the, the glass shattered in front of my face uh, and it remained intact. And then I was like, oh, wow, okay. Well, I don't want to get dragged out, so they're probably going to punch the window in. And this is the thing. They said that I got dragged out by the cops. Well, that's not true because um, where are the shards of glass in me? No. When they shattered the window, I unlocked the door and I opened it and I handed myself over. I did not resist arrest. They even had me held tightly and I even I said, look, you've got me in cuffs. I'm not going anywhere, but can you please let go of my arm? And we sat and we talked and then I refused to give information and then they popped me in the back of the paddy wagon for five minutes. The whole interaction was probably about a 10 minute ordeal in Carlton that day. They popped me in the back of the paddy wagon. I said, I will give you my name and address. They took my name and address and then they said, we want to ask you more questions, but we need to let you know that you don't need to answer them. I said, okay, cool. You have my information and you've confirmed with me that I don't need to answer any more questions. I'm going to go. Cool. and then I left and then that was it and I went back to the house so you unlocked the door before the glass like fell fell down the glass did not fall down at all the glass shattered because the jolt is obviously like designed so that it just shatters the whole glass without completely like um, you know pushing it in so it, the glass remained intact I, I, I even drove back to the house with the glass shattered obviously that's not safe but yeah the glass didn't get like pushed in, no glass went everywhere at all. Uh, because when it's uh, reported uh, through uh, Victoria Police and also the media, it sounds very dramatic. Like they they they, they took like a crow crow axe and smashed your window window in. Yeah, yeah. No, they like to sensationalise, don't they? But that's the thing. It's like they they need to give the people um, their fix because they're hungry vultures and. Um, the more sensational, like, sensational language and, like, just, yeah. I mean, all the headlines, it was just so hype, like, it was just hyperbolic language all over the place. Like, um, flouting Eve Black, you know, goes through deadly coronavirus checkpoint, blah, blah, blah. Which we've established it wasn't a checkpoint. Correct. So, Carlton was not a checkpoint. The first day when I went through um, the one that was actually filmed by uh, the acquaintance in the car with me, that was a checkpoint. Carlton was not a checkpoint. 
Carlton was me being targeted. And when the news uh, broke later that afternoon, the, uh, the I Stand With Dan crew on Twitter, they were uh, salivating that, ha-ha, uh, she's, she's been found, and ha-ha, that uh, window, car window being smashed, that would have really scared her, ha-ha, she's not so uh, confident and, and cocky uh, now, she, 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 got what you, uh, she got what she deserved. Now, uh, these are the people who... Oh, t two months ago, a were uh, supporting the local Black Lives Matter rallies, which is well, it's primarily a, a against police brutality. Yet, fast forward two months later, and they're celebrating well, an act of uh, police brutality, uh, smashing your your car window. It's the 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 total one eighty of these people to well, because. I'm not sure how much you followed the, uh, the the Black Lives Matter imported movement at the time, but they were uh, they, there were serious uh, Australian commentators talking about defunding the police. Now these people love what Victoria Police are, 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 are doing in uh, uh, su uh, su suppressing uh, all of the the anti lockdown activism. The irony. Yeah, it's which shows that uh, it, 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 there's no principle behind their uh, defund the police movement. There is a broader uh, political, overarching political philosophy and aim, which I I call communism. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? And I actually would like to, since we are talking about this, I really um, about the defunding the police and attitudes toward police officers. I actually really want to like make a point to say i don't i don't hate like i don't hate every single police officer it's not like that like i don't like the institution that that they're trying to take away our freedoms like when i go through checkpoints which i still do i'm friendly with the cops i'm not rude yeah there there, there, there are uh, a lot of uh, cops who who uh, when they're or uh, questioning somebody, doing a doing a, a check, do it in the the most diplomatic way uh, that uh, that they can. Uh, when I was mentioning before, when I uh, ha uh, had a license and reg registration check last year, uh, mm. the police were very friendly uh, to me. Uh, they uh, uh, they were just sort of asking me about like my day and and that while they're doing the license. Uh, check it was simply just sort of a well because you you, do, you don't uh, you don't want uh, for, uh, people who are driving a uh, uh, criminals who are driving unlicensed unregistered untracked that's the, that's the whole reason why why they do that because they are irresponsible people on the roads and uh, those who are on the roads to engage in traditional criminal activity mm. Well, that's what the police are there for, in my opinion, and, and, and all that power to them. I'm into it to serve and protect, no? I'm into it, really. But, like, I'm not a criminal. Well, it's only this year that, well, uh, as things are at the moment, a uh, uh, you're not allowed to. You're only allowed to leave your house for essential reasons, and within the hours of uh, five a.m. to to eight p.m. That's that that would have been unheard of in in twenty nineteen. Uh, now there's a few super chats who've uh, uh, that have popped up here. I'll just go through them. Uh, one from the Versace Cowboy who said, "Has Eve received any fines for breaching the bullshit COVID restrictions? And if so, will she be contesting them? My lawyer Neil Erickson will will take the case. Did you actually get a fine? Yeah. So I only just got a fine. It's it was sent quite late. Uh, but yes, I did. It was a $1,652 fine and it wasn't for the date of me going uh, across the checkpoint. It was for the date that they pulled me over and they didn't um, and they didn't even get any answers off of me as to where I was going. So they're making the assumption that I was breaching um, COVID restrictions or perhaps they were uh, tapping my phone or something. But um Yes, I did receive one, and it was for that day, which is rather through strange. Through the mail? Cause... Yes, through the mail, at my old mailing address. So it took a while for me to get my hands on it. 
which uh, obviously they because what I've seen in the past is, and a lot of people have filmed it, the the police come to their house directly to issue them with either a caution or a fine. Maybe they would have liked to mm -hmm. have hand-delivered it, it to you, uh, but they weren't able to, to find you for that. Yeah, I mean, perhaps, but even still, like, it's all there on video, so if they wanted to give me a fine for the checkpoint crossing day, there's, there's sufficient evidence there. And the other super chat is from Senator Slayer, who is Neil Erickson, for 20 uh, Australian dollars. He asks, are they natural? <laughs> no. There you go. Now that will segue. Do I get some of that 20, mate? <laughs> Why, well, you, you think that uh, you deserve a cut from... <laughs> since it's about you. <laughs> Yeah, next question, go on. Oh, this segues to, obviously, two days later, the, the expose uh, in, the, in the Herald Sun, which uh, went through uh, your employment history in the, the adult uh, entertainment industry. Uh, obviously, Herald Sun, have, well, having quite the, the tabloid uh, tendency, uh, mm. they, I, I think they thoroughly enjoyed uh, publishing all, all, all of those uh, photos, and it was like it, it's all true what they what they published. But the thing is, is yeah. it newsworthy? Is it relevant to yeah. uh, 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 to you going through those uh, coronavirus uh, checkpoints? Because to me, it was it it, it 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 was more basically like a gossip column rather oh, yeah. than a a, a serious uh, expose on your law breaking yeah absolutely i mean um i'm not ashamed of the job that i've done in the past um i've i've walked away from that industry and i'm happy being out of it but i don't regret it because it's shaped me into the woman that i am today which is someone who i rather like um and it's taught me to be confident and to assert myself uh, so, but they definitely see that as something for me to be embarrassed about. And yeah. I think that the intention of it is what makes me feel embarrassed because it was, it's completely irrelevant to everything that had happened. Um, and the, yeah, the intention of it was simply to drag me down. And even people who don't agree with what it is that I had done even came out to say, I think, like, even people who don't like me do not know me at all, saying, I think she's a dickhead, but this has nothing to do with her work, and this is an incredibly poor taste. And that's the thing. Everything that they said, like, well, not everything that they said, but things, for the, for the most part, things that they said were true, but they were written in incredibly poor and incredibly poor taste and just so very irrelevant. Because if I was a school teacher or just a normal profession it wouldn't have been commented upon it was designed to humiliate you and i've Absolutely. noticed i've noticed this with uh, because uh, basically when your clip went viral that's when uh, the the mainstream media did exposés on on all of the uh, the anti lockdown uh, activists they they did one on on james they've done several on uh, Raphael and and Thanos because you're all new to this and so they want to basically test how strong you are and see if you can take the heat because as as i just said it was designed uh, not just uh, designed to humiliate you but also basically to get you to curl up in a ball uh, go under the covers and not want to uh, be in the public eye ever again that was the aim with you that's the the aim with their their stories on on all the other anti-lockdown activists yeah. just a uh, make the scrutiny so strong uh because you're new you haven't experienced this type of scrutiny before that you'll just go away disappear right yeah uh and and i definitely could could see that that was it and i and i felt it you know it was a lot it's it was it was a lot but the biggest part of it was actually the overwhelm of it all like being contacted by like thousands of people and just 
it was just a lot to deal with because it's like my whole life has suddenly become public information. Um, I, I was never like, you know, secretive about the, the job that I did. Um, when I would meet people, I used to tell them that, that that's what I did for work. Um, but like the, the, the tone in which it was displayed. Yeah. Like, I mean, that just, it made me want to curl into a ball for a little bit just because it was just a lot to deal with. But Tim, it didn't break my spirit. I am a sensitive woman. I definitely am. I, and I've, for a long time, I pretended like, oh no, I don't have, I'm not that much of an emotional woman. I don't feel things. No, I do. And I do feel things very deeply, but I'm also a very strong woman and it didn't break my spirit because I'm here and I, and I want to keep talking about it. Well, you did take a, a bit of a, a break, and that's probably the, the mainstream media thought, yeah, we've, we've beaten her into uh, submission, but, well, mm -hmm. you're, you're appearing on uh, my program tonight, uh, you're back making uh, Facebook uh, videos, so it didn't break you, and I've noticed for all the other uh, uh, anti-lockdown uh, activists, uh, the, 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 the mainstream media... Uh, coverage exposés on them hasn't ha hasn't broken them either yeah and i think that it's because that we know that we're fighting for something um that's really important whether or not the majority of australians unfortunately don't see that yet or might not ever and just going back to uh, the the ethical line that was uh, crossed by the the herald sun i noticed that uh, fiona Patton, uh or she voted for the the state of emergency extension uh last night she still believes that you're a covid idiot uh but uh, decried the herald sun's slut shaming of you because well the reason party used to be the the sex party which she founded she was chair of the eros uh, foundation which represents the adult entertainment industry and as a former uh, sex sex worker herself. So even even though she thought you were a COVID idiot, she, she did call out the sensationalism. Yeah, and you know what? It's things like that that I guess I wouldn't say that it makes me feel better because I, like, I'm good with who I am and what I've done. But it things like that definitely, um, they give me a little bit more faith in humanity because I don't need everybody to agree with me. I would just like for people to respect me and you don't need to bully, you don't need to shame people. So I'm so fine with, you know, her calling me a COVID idiot if she wants to, but to put me down and try to make me look bad because of the previous line of work that I was in. I mean, calling me a COVID idiot is not a personal attack. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's a... It... I was going to call it a slur, but it's 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 just a name call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I could, I could call her like a sheeple or whatever. Like, you know, I, I'm fine with that. Like, it's it's not a personal attack. Uh, now let's move on to talking about. Well, we've talked a little bit about the the the, the virus your views on the virus itself. Uh, you, you talked about that you're inspired to uh, uh, to ch or challenge uh, the, the, the checkpoints based on what you read about at Common Law. I've, I've interviewed a lot of people with your uh, beliefs uh, re regarding uh, what they see as uh, unlawful uh, directives and, and acts. And it's... The, the arguments I, I, I see, they're, they're always very technical that this hasn't been followed and, and, and that sort of thing. It's, it's based on a very technical, legally, legal argument, which has, has never been upheld in, in any uh, court, court decision. And it doesn't change the, the, the fact that uh, the... the what we're living under is well the the state of emergency declaration under the public health and well-being act 2008 and the the state of disaster declaration under the emergency management act in in 2013 uh, the, the, it's certainly a conversation worth having uh, about the executive uh, power that can be unleashed and has been unleashed through uh, uh, those acts uh, but it's never going to be found invalid by a court 
in Australia. There's state border closures. There's a decent case under Section 92 of the uh, Australian Constitution. I'm not uh, asking you to respond to what I'm uh, proposing here, but it, although it, you got through one of those the, the, those checkpoints, it's but it's not going to get you much further than that in terms of legal challenges. I would, agree. I would agree, and I think that that's because with the state of everything now being, it's just hostile, I'll put it that way. Um, I think that regardless of whether or not you might be an absolute whiz and you might know all of the common law stuff um, and even the, the normal system, like like the back of your hand. But in a, with how dire the situation is right now, I honestly think that none of that is going to matter because police officials, uh, like police officers, by the directives of um, Daniel Andrews and the chief health minister, chief, chief health minister. Yeah, they're, they're the, um, the directives the of the, the chief health officer who well is appointed by the the government and well the government's enacts this based on his advice so he it's the chief health officer's directives which daniel andrews has chosen to codify in the state of emergency declaration that's how it works right so because uh, it's that dire with the situation and they've given police you know extra powers so they're actually like you know there has been unlawful arrests taking place, but I think that it's actually at a point now where they're probably being encouraged, don't worry, just do it, and then deal with the collateral damage later. I think that, well, your uh, your video, uh, I think that probably, and I'm not blaming you uh, in any way, is I think basically what encouraged Daniel Andrews to add on, on August the 2nd, the state of disaster declaration which hadn't been used before which well it allows the the curfew to be implemented and the the travel radius but it also allows to police to enter any premises without a warrant or any and to uh, detain people they had even more uh extraordinary powers and uh, as we've seen over the past week they've been uh, using uh, the, 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 those powers more more frequently uh, with the uh, what's been going on in Dandenong uh, and Broad Meadows and the uh, arrests and uh, charges of incitement and, and gagging of those who are engaged in uh, organizing, planning or promoting uh, protests this Saturday. Um. I think that's a pretty bold assumption to say that I would be the, if that is the assumption that I'm the main reason, I would say that I could have been a contributing catalyst. Yeah, that's but probably a fair, fair statement. I, did, I, 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 did, I, I didn't mean to imply that, but I'm sort of, yeah, sort of saying it's a catalyst. It sort of kickstarted yeah. that. Yeah, no, abs I, absolutely. I, I can't deny that, um, that I was probably a catalyst for greater restrictions. Um, you know, which which probably adds to the upset of a lot of Victorians who are probably in that middle ground, you know. They're like, um, well, I don't think that this COVID stuff is being um, told to us in, in, full, in, in full spectrum of the truth, but um, I just want this lockdown to be over with. So, like, can't people like you just cooperate? Like, can't you just do the right thing? Can't you just lay low? And I understand the frustrations of these people, but with the way that I am seeing it, it's not just about that because the further we submit, the further we comply, the more we take this, the worse it's going to get. It's not a matter of everything is just going to become dandy. You know what I mean? Like it's just going to get worse and worse and worse the more we submit. I mean, I'm not trying to incite anything by saying that either, but those have, that's been the, the belief that I've held toward people who have been saying, well, why can't you just comply? Like, I agree, it's, you know, it's bullshit and it's it's being sensationalised and it's not um, what we're being led to believe. But I don't, I really don't see it that way. I really don't see it as a case of, oh, well, if you just play like a good girl, um, then it's all going to be all right and the restrictions will be lifted. I'm sorry, I don't see it that way. I really don't. I have, when in the past have the government given us any reason to trust them? 
and why should I trust them now? Australia well, has had such a good history that we, we've got we've got a we've had a beautiful lifestyle. Whereas if you look at other countries where there's been like you know war torn countries like civil war and all that kind of thing, the police the people like they don't trust their government. They've been, they've been given no reason to trust the government. Australians have had their lifestyle handed to them on a platter. We have amazing opportunities here for lifestyle, so we've never been given any reason to question the system because it has served us so well. For the general population, I'm saying. Well, the thing that uh, gets me is that when uh, the first lockdown uh, was implemented, it was it was nation nationwide. I think it was only South Australia and Western Australia that didn't go past a, a level two lockdown, so they didn't go full house arrest where you weren't allowed to visit uh, anybody. But it was basically uh, 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 trust us. Uh, this is this is going to make sure that uh, we suppress the uh, the virus. So we're, we're going to make sure that uh, those who come from overseas, uh, quarantine is going to be uh, secure. And when the the, re the first reopening in Victoria happened, there were when you went into a, a pub or something, you had to sign in for contact tracing purposes. So it's basically trust us with the quarantine and give your details over so we can do the the contact tracing as has been revealed at uh, the Victorian government's stuff up with the hotel quarantine, poor contact tracing. It's their incompetence which has led to this second wave. But we see, we saw repeatedly throughout this, uh, Daniel Andrews uh, blaming uh, Victorians for, for not following uh, his rules. And uh, us getting out of this depends on, well, the the, the government finally being uh, competent with uh, containing outbreaks and also, and also uh, contact tracing uh, as well. I mean, other nations have taken the approach, don't lock down the healthy, but quarantine the vulnerable in uh, Victoria and other parts of Australia. Uh, they've uh, locked down and quarantined the, the healthy, but failed to protect the, uh, the vulnerable. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have too much to say on on the particulars of it because I just, I just don't believe what we're being told flat out. Um, I do agree with the idea though of uh, quarantining the vulnerable and the elderly and letting the the healthy um, go about their life so we don't crush the economy even crush the economy even further. Um, and I do want to point out something that I was thinking as you were explaining that is, I mean, don't you find it so interesting that it's just Victoria that had these ridiculous um, restrictions? Like, if these restrictions really, really worked, then um, why, like, how come New South Wales and Queensland and every other state, they've been able to get out of quarantine? Could there be an agenda with Victoria? I'm not saying that there definitely is. I don't know for certain, but how can it be that only Victoria was the only state that wasn't following the rules after we went back into stage two so that we ended up getting a second wave? Don't Isn't that suspicious? Why just Victoria? Uh, I, I don't believe that uh, there's uh, any sort of overarching agenda. I know that there, there has been uh, those, well, I will call them conspiracy theories, that uh, uh, Daniel Andrews has been greeting flights uh, at Melbourne Airport from uh, uh, China with Chinese officials uh, uh, coming in. He was actually asked about that by Gabriella Power at a press conference, and he said, no, I haven't been to Melbourne Airport since uh, March, but I, I, my firm belief is that this second lockdown is due to to government uh, in incompetence, as proven by the the hotel quarantine incompetence and contact tracing, not securing uh, the vulnerable. Uh, my belief is is that governments are more incompetent than conspiratorial. Whichever way you want to swing it. They're not doing the right thing. Well, now the question goes to uh, how how low do the the, the numbers need to be uh, that uh, the opening up can begin? None of us have any idea what Daniel Andrews is going to announce on Sunday. He signalled two roadmaps: one for Melbourne Metro, one for regional uh, Victoria. Uh, 
uh, Brett Su uh, Dr. Brett Sutton today said that 30 uh, cases a day would sort of be the acceptable manageable. Uh, so we were at 73 on Monday, we're at 70 yesterday, we went up to 90 today. He's always said, Dr. Brett Sutton, that uh, Wednesdays are a spike day, so don't be uh, too alarmed about that. As I said in my introduction, we, don't, we, we still don't know what the, if the restrictions might continue on, from September the 14th onward. There's so much uncertainty and obviously there's small, like small businesses who are on the, on the brink. Uh, there's obviously young people's education is being affected. Uh, the mental health effects from, from loneliness or being uh, trapped in uh, an abusive or unsafe household, these are, uh, 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 these are still brewing and the longer the lockdown continues, they're, they're going to get worse. Certainly. I mean, you don't really hear them um, talking about the suicide rates, do you? Well, last week, the Victorian coroner said that uh, the suicide rate to up to up to this point this year is the same as, as last year, which I noticed the I Stand With Dan people said, oh, see, suicides haven't increased, which is quite callous that shouldn't we, uh, shouldn't we be aiming for less suicides year on year? You're basically dismissing saying, oh, well, the same amount of people killed themselves as last year, so that's no big deal yeah, right. there, there's still people that that kill themselves that's that's tragic i mean that's like saying that uh, the, the the road toll of this year is the same as last year so therefore everything's fine well say that to the uh, dead motorists yeah absolutely no I'm, I'm with you entirely i think that like we're not looking at the important things we're only looking at what makes the most news and you know how how can we put people further into fear uh, there's a uh, another super chat here from Senator Slayer uh, for ten Australian dollars. Uh, this is a <laughs> this is much nicer one. Uh, good on you. Fuck the media scumbags. Uh, what's that person's name? Senator Slayer. Senator Slayer. Thank you, dear. <laughs> But it's clear uh, that uh, Saturday or the the the, the, the Saturday rally is is not going to happen. And for the record, I uh, would not advise anyone to go. I think it's going to be uh, counter uh, c count counterproductive. And uh, you've seen uh, seen Victoria Police's action this week. I'd never incite anyone to to break the the current laws that we we have but uh, uh, but it also seems to me that uh, the uh, the andrews government and victoria police are doing a a, a good job of oh, basically uh, turning people against them all on their own yeah um i don't have much that i want to say as far as the protest is concerned um, if anybody is wondering, will I or will I not be going? No, I will not be attending. I thought that I did want to, but uh, I'm feeling strongly that it won't be a good idea for me. And um, yeah, that, that I will make a statement saying that, that I, that I don't plan on attending. And as for the people who are attending, I, I love the cause it's being fought for and I'm not going to say anything further on that. Because uh, I mentioned my introduction, Avi Yemeni, I'm not sure um, if you've uh, uh, come across his videos, but uh, I agree with him when he, he calls it a, a trap because the last thing uh, that anyone wants to do is give Daniel Andrews a scapegoat for say, to, to say, oh, see, I didn't do anything. It's all these COVID idiots uh, out on the street. This is why you're all, all, all stuck, at, uh, stuck at home still. Don't, don't hate me, hate them. Uh, so essentially, uh, you're, uh, uh, by going on Saturday, you're potentially handing him a gift. Uh, I, I definitely see that that's a way to look at it. But I mean, I think the intention behind it is like, yeah, but it's not about giving him ammunition to say, oh, well, yeah, I'm justified in extending it. I think that the intention is like, no, 
fuck that. We don't care if you want to extend it. We want our freedom and we're going to take it. I think that's more the intention. I know that it's called uh, Reignite Democracy Australia. They hold a weekly virtual protests against uh, Dan Andrews through their, their Facebook page. They've got some, some high profile uh, people to speak, uh, such as uh, Liberal MPs uh, Bernie Finn, uh, Brad Rosewell, and also uh, commentators such as Morgan Jonas and and Topher Field and also uh, uh, Jim from, from Jim's Mowing because he's actually launched a, a class action on behalf of his uh, uh, fran uh, franchises uh, because the stage four lockdown basically makes uh, his uh, uh, franchises unable to, to operate. And even uh, Liberal Senator Sarah Henderson su uh, has suggested a class action by businesses against the, the lockdown. Um, I have met people who are saying that they, um, that they're also planning on doing the same, forming a class action, uh, against him. And I don't know anything about that. I don't operate a business, so I don't know. I've got, I've got nothing to, to add on that. Well, it's been great to finally chat with you, uh, tonight and, well, uh, here, uh, the, the, the side that we, you would say that the media has uh, refused to cover because back in the, the olden days of journalism, they used to reach out to people such as yourself uh, uh, for comment. And well, it's not just occurred to you where they've published, published things about you and the first you've heard of it is when it's uh, published. They've done the same with uh, James and, and Raphael. I've messaged them all to say, hey, uh, it says here that uh, you could not be contacted for comment. Did they contact you? And they've said no. Right. Um, I have had the Sun Herald uh, contact me and I've had Channel 9 contact me, uh, but not Channel 7. Uh, the Sun Herald contacted me after they posted things um, about my history having worked in um, the adult entertainment industry. Um, but, I mean, I basically didn't want to give them uh, ammunition because I just knew that they would probably take my words out of context like they do everything. Um, but, no, I wasn't contacted prior to them releasing anything about me. Um, and I wasn't contacted about the second round um, of releasing that was done either. Actually, I would say that there's been three rounds. So there was the initial, and then there was the Carlton um, arrest with the window breaking. And then now, since I made the video the other day, I've had two attempts to be contacted by media, but not before they've said anything. They've gone and said things and then asked. Yeah, that's a, that's a typical uh, tactic by them. They're just when they're about to hit publish, they'll contact you for comment to say, and then claim that you're unavailable for comment one minute before they hit publish. Right. Uh, but you are right that, well, anything you say to them can be uh, used against you. And it's that, construed. Yes, and uh, the, the media are not uh, the police. You don't have to answer their questions, period. As, well, uh, uh, you... Uh, th there's a few qu uh, questions that you haven't answered of mine, which is you're right. I'm not a police officer either. You don't need to tell me anything. You didn't even need to agree to this uh, uh, interview as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I'm, uh, I'm I'm good at saying no to things, and um, so I, I I I don't like to further incriminate myself if I don't need to put it that way. Yeah, well, that's that's what the right to silence is, which. Uh, if we, do you mind if I play that uh, that footage of that um, or oh, that mother who was arrested uh, today? Oh, yeah, yeah. I you, think Zoe is her name. Yes, you won't be able to hear it. Okay. Um, she at least got the right to to silence, but it's still uh, distressing. The audience will be able to hear it, but uh, you'll be able to see it, but but not hear it. Yep. But cool, cool, yeah, cool. and I just warn my audience that that well, I found this uh, very distressing. Mm. I have no idea why you guys are doing this. Um, sure. Yeah, you can show me your search warrant before you go right. through my so house. You're, you're, you're the, the yeah, I own this house. There it is. Yeah, that's a search warrant. Search warrant for what? Now, what I will explain to you is, is if you want to listen, you got your phone going. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Right. Now you're under arrest in relation to incitement. 
incitement. What's yeah. that? Now, you're not obliged to say do anything, but anything you say do may be given in evidence. Excuse me, incitement for what? What the, What on earth? Yeah. Excuse me, what What on earth? Yeah, just put your phone down. Can you, Can like, report this? I'm in my pyjamas. What's I this? I've an ultrasound in an hour. Yeah, pregnant. yeah she's pregnant, so... Well, I'll take it easy. What's this about? I have an ultrasound just let me in an hour. Let me finish and I'll explain. It's in relation to a Facebook post, in relation to a lockdown protest you put on for Saturday. Yeah, and I wasn't breaking any laws by doing that. You are that. actually. You are breaking all. That's why I'm arresting you. In relation to in front How of can my you arrest her? That's. In front of my two children. Can't you just say to her, take the post down? Like, come I'm on. I'm happy to delete the post. This yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. But I have to give you these caution and rights. Do you understand? Yeah, that's fine. Not, like, I'm happy to delete the post. This is ridiculous. Like, I just said, that's fine. Maybe giving the evidence. you understand that? Yeah, that's fine. But my two kids are here. I have an ultrasound in an hour. Like, I'm happy to delete the post. You also have the right to communicate with or to communicate with a legal practitioner. Do you understand those rights? Yeah, this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is a bit unfair. Come on, mate. No, we, we what about she just doesn't right. do the event? Like, it's not like she's done it. Well, she yeah, made a post. Already committed the offence. So I'm not going to. So that's it. an offence. Now, the search warrant entitles us, and we're required to seize any computers, no. any mobile devices you have. Earth? Yeah. Can I just what get your bags there, mate? It's all there. stress on her too she's pregnant like come on i'm relaxed this is just very unfair any computers and let me finish let me finish any mobile telephone you've got okay so what we want is any mobile telephone you've got you don't need that it's yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, it doesn't matter. Any device in this house, we're taking. This is well, ridiculous. you're not taking my phone. Well, I'm taking any device. Any That's device. my phone. It's, um, it's nothing it's to do with her. It's my uh, so what I've heard is that she was allegedly organising a uh, anti-lockdown protest in uh, Ballarat. Now, uh, this uh, arrest uh, arrest footage has not just gone viral on Facebook. It was also on the the 6 p.m. news bulletins tonight, and obviously uh, beamed into to hundreds of thousands of homes. Uh, that would uh, set, if I find it distressing, others will as well. And I noticed that on the uh, Victoria Police uh, Facebook page, uh, they're not bragging about that arrest, even though they uh, bragged about the uh, arrest of uh, two males yesterday. And well, uh, with your car yeah. window being uh, smashed in, the uh, police commissioner, Shane Patton, actually bragged that uh, they'd smashed uh, uh, car windows in against uh, uh, sovereign citizens. So. Uh, it's just interesting to, to, to note uh, the change uh, in reporting on the Victoria Police Facebook page today. Yeah, I think um, I haven't personally observed it, but if, um, if that's what you're saying and that's the case, uh, then yeah, I think people will empathise more with uh, a, a family woman. She's pregnant, she's got two kids, she's there with her partner or husband. Um, and it was obviously like a lot more distressing because they've come into her home, their home. And, um, you know, I feel like with me and other people, it's seen as like, uh, we were aggravating it and, and we were like, Oh yeah, they're still there. Right. I, I stand with damn people who've, who've said in reaction to that, I have no sympathy. She got what she deserves. She's not so tough now. Like even that, that's their response to that footage. About that Zoe lady. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and of course it's still going to be those people, but I, I would say that the um, that the greater Australian public would probably have a lot more empathy for her um, than they would for me. They might simply empathise with her because she's a pregnant woman. You know, she she was in her own home and uh, not expecting it. Um, yeah, and obviously they're not as proud of that either because, like you said, they're not publicising that. Uh, like they have every other arrest that they've made.
And we saw last week a a, a, a woman in Benalla in northern New South Wales lose her, her baby because of the, the state border closure with uh, Queensland. Uh, uh, couldn't get to a Sydney hospital quick enough because it was was so far away. And uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk uh, tried to claim, no, no, we, uh, 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 we'd never deny emergency medical care, even though she said two weeks ago, Queensland hospitals are only- Other Queenslanders? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, uh, she has granted an exemption, a uh, travel exemption, to the AFL CEO, uh, Gillian McLaughlin and uh, Eddie Maguire to fly up from Melbourne to Brisbane, not to have to go on quarantine so she can brag about bringing the AFL grand final to uh, Brisbane, which it's, again, she's well tone deaf, tin ear. That is such a bad look. She thinks she's done a good job getting this major event there but it's just exposed a a two-tier system there yeah. well if you're sick uh we don't want uh, uh, we don't uh, we don't want you seeking care in a hospital but hey if you're a football administrator come in bloody rich isn't it mate mm. And we also had today, this is the, the final bit, I, I hope you don't mind me uh, feeling no, already no, no, no. On, on the, in front of you, the uh, Australian GDP quarterly figures were released today, our GDP retracted by 7%, so we are officially in recession now, first recession in, in 29 years, so that's another economic uh, reality hitting again today. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, um, I feel like I'm rather fortunate in that I'm a young single woman, um, and I haven't been—I haven't got a mortgage, nothing like that. I have no debt, um, but I—I I just can't imagine what other Australians are going through right now. Um, the amount of stress, the amount of stress, and and and, and the weight that's on them right now is just—I I can't even begin to imagine what it's like. Moving forward for everyone, it's obviously going to be really difficult. But I can't, I can't, you know, get out there and claim like I'm a victim in in that. As far as the economic situation is concerned, at least not at this point right now, um, because um, there's people out there who have it so much worse than me. Uh, you, you've said that uh, you're you're leaving the adult entertainment industry now. Have Obvi left. Yeah, uh, obviously, uh, twenty eight. Uh, you're you're still young. Um, so what uh, uh, what are you thinking uh, for the the years ahead? Um, well, I don't have like a, a vision of like oh, I would really like to have this career. Um, I have thought a lot recently that I would like to go back um, to school and get a trade. I've thought to become um, a Sparky uh, or possibly to study naturopathy because I've long had an interest in health, wellness and nutrition. But um, as cheesy as it might sound, like um, I actually just really like the idea of living somewhere quiet and simple on land, getting married, having a couple of kids and just living a quiet, simple life, staying at home, um, looking after kids. I'm a bit of a traditionalist um, and the more time goes on, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. And I, and I, um, and I, I think that it's a really beautiful place for a woman to be in, to, to, to be the mother of a house and, and to be looking after children. And, um, you know, maybe some feminists will think that that's really bad of me, but, um, I don't think that anything would fulfill me more than the idea of um, having having a family and living like a, a simple um, but fulfilling life. I think there's going so, to be, after the, the lockdown and travel restrictions are lifted, there's going to be a mass exodus from the, the, the cities. Oh, well, yes. Because the, the density, that's, well, help the virus spread and that's where the, uh, the, the lockdowns are the harshest and, and strictly enforced. I think the, the simpler life a rural property where you're not bothered by well you can go and out and meet people but you're not bothered uh in the in your uh private home because this has been another sad thing about the the lockdowns the the nosy neighbors the the busy bodies those mm. that, the snitch lines the 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 karens uh as well telling people people off i i love people they 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 look at the the bush now and it, it's people are a lot sort of simpler more relaxed more community out there so there's going to be a lot of people are going to be reassessing their lifestyles after this 
Oh, absolutely. Um, and that sort of ties into something that I have said in the video that I made the other day, which is that all of this stuff has been um, a great trigger for me to move toward the things that I want to create for myself. So I no longer live in Melbourne um, and it's been a really positive move for me. And uh, it's it's been a thing of mine for a while that I've wanted to live rural again. I, um, I live rural uh, at different stages in my life and it's just, I'm, I'm much happier and the people seem to be much happier. There's, there's no, um, well, there's hardly any traffic. Um, it's just, I, I just think that it's how we're, how we're meant to be. And I don't think that it's healthy for us to be living on top of one another um, in, in big cities. And privacy, you know, like it's really nice to not, to not have to see um, neighbours and houses every single way, every single um, direction that you look. It's peaceful. It's, it's really beautiful. And I do think that it's, I think that, yeah, there is definitely a massive um, shift toward that happening as uh, well. Yeah, I, I definitely now, uh, retrospectively, appreciate what my, my grandparents uh, said. Back in my day, it was a, a simpler time. It sounds so lovely now. And yes, I want to hear more of those stories now because it sounds lovely compared to what's happening now. Doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think that the problem is when we're in the city, there's so much stimulation. Like we're, we're it's just, it's like a sensory overload. You yeah, know with what I mean? the, the bright lights and yeah. uh, all yeah. the uh, uh, events uh, going on. It, you're exactly right. It's exactly. So it's like, there's so much, this is the problem. Like we live in a, in, in, especially in a city in where it's, there is so much happening all the time. And then we have the illusion of choice, which is actually crippling. Like, if you live a simpler life and you go to work during the day and you do your job and then you come home and then dinner's on the table and blah, 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 like, okay, there's, there's, less, there's less options on offer, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that you're going to feel more fulfilled. Like, you don't need to have a lot of things in life to be happy. Nice things are good to have, but I, I've met more people who are happier in the bush than what I meet in the city. And it's not because of the concentration. Um, it's not because of the, um, it, it's, sorry, it's contrary to the population um, disparity because there's less people in the country, but I meet more people that are happier than what I do in the city, despite the intense concentration of population. Well, I don't know about the, the other states and territories with their borders, but uh, New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian signaled today that she wants a, a roadmap to relax the border with Victoria. It's expanding to a 50 kilometre radius uh, uh, this Friday, and even during the, the first lockdown victoria and new south wales didn't close their uh, their border so uh, certainly uh, well the other states are, are shocking on borders a uh, south australia uh, queensland but uh, at least uh, if there's any uh, if there's a, if, if any sort of good uh, that uh, victorian and new south wales governments agree that the current border closure is only temporary and we want to open it <sighs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, Your girl wants to go on a road trip. I've got a beautiful four-wheel drive out there that's just like waiting to hit the road. Oh, well, thanks again for your time tonight. Uh, thanks for uh, speaking uh, with me. Uh, I know that yeah, it's been quite a, uh, quite the unexpected uh, experience and has been uh, overwhelming, but uh, uh, you're, you're back, well, I wouldn't say super active now, but still say, saying your piece, uh, which is, uh, which, which is good. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Tim. It's been really good to, um, take the time away just to sort of recoup and recalibrate because it was of course, incredibly shocking, but, um, yeah, I definitely felt like it was important to be able to have my say, uh, and be received by an audience that, uh, for the most part people who are still tuning in, um, they, they support what I have to say, or at least they don't think that I'm a piece of shit. So that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you forget that, uh, uh, people are nice. Yeah. I mean, I had, a, I had a few moments, but I will say, despite all of the crap things that have been said about me, none of them have been said to me in person. So there's been a few people saying, you know, Oh, uh, how does it feel that 99.9% .9 of Australia wants to spit on you? I'm like, oh, well, that's nice, dear, because 99.9% .9 of Australia must be absolute cowards because no one's come up to me in the street and said anything. All I've had is people giving me a hug and saying I'm a fucking legend. If that, if that, if, 
that person who's claiming that all of Australia wants to, to, to spit on you, if they support the coronavirus uh, uh, restrictions and social distancing, <laughs> then that's not very healthy for them to, uh, to, to, to spit on you. They're breaking their own rules. <laughs> Next time I need a witty retort that, um, that, you know, fits in with their narrative of like, you know, coronavirus is dangerous, I'll make sure I contact you first. Okay. All right. Take care. Thank you so much, Tim. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.